Hey there, Facebook. Uh, I think I'm in the right place right now. <laughs> I think I'm posting this on my BRB yoga page. So hey everybody, I'm Catherine Middlebrooks. Hey, I wanted to hop on because October is going to be all about hips at BRB yoga. I'm going to be doing a lot of training on it, uh, a special free workshop, all of that stuff. More details will be coming out about all of that. But what I wanted to share today was a, quite a few unexpected causes of hip pain. So when people are struggling with hip issues, usually their hips feel tight or achy or they are really unstable and they kind of feel like they pop out all the time. Um, usually they're like, well, it's just my hips, right? But really, most often the hips are experiencing these issues because of things that are out of balance in other places in the body. So what I want to share today is a couple of different causes, unexpected causes of hip issues. And these are specifically most often in postpartum women. Okay, so let's dive in. I'm just going to go through them. First one, weak core. If your core muscles are not strong, that can definitely, definitely create hip issues, hip pain, hip discomfort, loosey goosiness in the hip, SI joint dysfunction, all that stuff. The hip, the core stabilizes the pelvis from above. If the core isn't doing its job, the pelvis will be unstable. Uh, cause number two, tight back muscles. Uh, when your core is weak, usually the back gets tight. If the back is tight, then it can be pulling on the pelvis from the backside. That can create hip issues. Number three, uh, weak glutes. Pregnancy in general makes our glutes really weak. Uh, and then there's all this stuff that goes on that can create even more exacerbate those weak glutes. But the glutes really work to stabilize the pelvis from below. And if they're not strong, then they don't do that job. Number four, hamstring dominance. If your hamstrings are working harder than your glutes, that can jack up your hips. Uh, number five, I think I'm on five, pelvic floor tightness. So the pelvic floor is essential for stabilizing the pelvis from below as well, the pelvic floor and the glutes. Uh, if you have an overactive pelvic floor, something I've been talking about for weeks and weeks now, that can throw out your hips because it's pulling on the pelvis from below. It can pull things out of symmetry and make muscles function poorly. Number six, your alignment. If you are aligning, if you are out of alignment in your everyday life, if you stand poorly, if you walk poorly, if you sit poorly, well, that can for sure mess up your hips because everything you are doing in your day, kind of the pelvis is the, the uh, relay station between the upper body and the lower body. So what, if there's anything out of balance below, that can mess up the hips. If there's anything out of balance above, that can mess up your hips. So alignment is a really important factor in hip health. Uh, and what number am I on? Number seven, <laughs> glute clenching. This is something that a lot of postpartum women do. They tend to live in this position where their glutes are always, always slightly turned on. Often that happens because they don't have the stability in the core and their glutes will try and take over the work. So if you are someone who is a constant glute clencher, that can really impact your hips. Hey guys that are hopping on, I'm just going through um, a number of unexpected causes of hip pain because I'm going to be talking a lot about hips over the next few weeks. Uh, I don't know what number I'm on now. Number eight, I should have numbered these. Uh, issues with your deep hip rotators. So these are muscles like your piriformis, obturator internus. These are muscles that lie deep inside your hips, your pelvis. Often they are used to rotate your leg outward and inward. And those can get very overactive, especially in a postpartum body. If you have uh, issues with your deep hip rotators, that will be felt as uh, crappy hips. <laughs> Very technical terms I'm using here. And then number nine, the last one, is tight adductor muscles. So these are our inner thigh muscles. And often these muscles, again, in pregnancy, when there's a lack of stability in the pelvis, sometimes these muscles kind of lock down and they get really tight and knotty and um, chronically active. 
if those are working overtime, they can pull on the pelvis and make your hips hurt. And especially if one is tighter than another, that's not good because then it's going to pull one side of your pelvis more than the other, contribute to a lot of issues. Often things like SI joint dysfunction is because of an asymmetric pull in the pelvis. Okay, that's it. So that's it. Nine things that you may want to have in mind if you have hip stuff going on, right? It's not just the hips. I, 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 whenever I look at the body, I look at, okay, what you're experiencing is a symptom, but we need to get to the underlying cause. And often the underlying cause is that there's other stuff going on in multiple other parts of the body. It's like a beautiful puzzle that we need to figure out. So those are some unexpected causes. If you're like, cool, now I know, now what? Just stay tuned because over the next few weeks, I'm going to be talking a lot more about what's going on in, in hips postpartum, what we can do to fix it, and all of that good stuff. So this is just a little preview to get you thinking about the fact that hip issues are usually a bigger issue than just the hips. All right, let me know if you have questions on that or if any of that was surprising or unexpected to you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.